good day guys welcome to the third video series on how to design solar inverter so in our last video we discussed about the transformer how the transformer also determines the capacity of an inverter and we did some basic uh, calculation the power rating of the transformer so now in this video we are going to look at the MOSFET, how to select the MOSFET because in, in an inverter is the MOSFET that will serve as a switch just like the way I explained the, the behavior of how inverter convert DC to AC. So this MOSFET will replace those switch that you, you saw there, that I drew there. So this MOSFET is going to be the one to replace those switch since it will be controlled by a signal not by my hand so now in this video we are going to talk how to select a mosfet to match the capacity of an inverter that you are designing looking at the, the transformer side that the, that we discussed in our last video we talked that uh, since we are having a 12 volt step down here in this coil this coil is is the one that will go to the the switching side of the MOSFET while we take our output from here and we say that the amount of current that will flow here is 83 amps and I also this uh, and I also say that this 83 amp does not mean that if you put a, a ammeter here you will see 83, 83 amps it depends on the output load that is being applied here we determine the current that will be drawn from this coil side through the MOSFET and the battery so once we have once we put a load up to 1000 watts load in this side which we draw maximum of 4.54 amps in the output side it will cause uh, it will cause 83 amps current to flow this side and we are going to do the the calculation in this video so how do we select a, a suitable MOSFET for to match this at 1000 was design inverter so since so since we are expecting 83 amps to flow here we also need a MOSFET that can handle that kind of 83 amps current that will flow to, through this coil so when designing a MOSFET when when selecting a MOSFET you should also check the data sheet to know the maximum current that will flow through the drain to the source and the voltage. So just like this one, we have a 55 volts and 180 amps. That means you can apply 55 volts through this drain to source. And also this drain to source can also accept 100 and can also accommodate 180 amps through this drain to source to, through this drain to source without harming this MOSFET. So that is what we are going to put into consideration. And another thing is that at times you will see some of these inverter, you will see so many MOSFET being parallel. The reason why these MOSFET are being parallel is that if the MOSFET cannot meet the maximum current that will flow through the transformer, depending on whatever you are designing. Let's say uh, we are building a 15 kVA inverter. And the, the current that will flow through this through the the secondary side, we we, we reach up to five, for uh, for example we reach up to 500 amps, and you know that a particular MOSFET rating cannot reach up to that, just like this one. Like look at this uh, rating of this MOSFET. This one can only handle 30 volts, 15 amps from drain to source. And this one can handle 100, 100 volts and 20 amps from drain to source. So whenever you have a, a, a lower value of a MOSFET, in order to achieve what you want, you need to parallel the MOSFET so that you can, the MOSFET can be able to handle that amount of current that you are expecting. Just for example, if this we are expecting 83 amps to flow here, and we have some, and we have these 20 amps. This what this this MOSFET, this MOSFET, the, a single MOSFET cannot handle this uh, 83 amps. In order to meet this requirement, we need to parallel it. So 
we've prepared up to four or five MOSFETs, which can be which can be able to handle these 83 amps. So that is the reason why you, some of the uh, inverter that you see, you see where they parallel the MOSFET. The parallel means the all the whole drain will be connected together, the whole source will be connected together, and the gates will be connected together with the gate resistor feeding through the, the signal input, where the signal input will be fed in. So that is the reason why you see some of MOSFETs being parallel. Just like this one now, you can see you can use a single MOSFET for this inverter design because the rating of this most this particular MOSFET is 180 amps and 55 volts. So if you have if you are building a 96 volt system, this MOSFET cannot work. You have to go for a higher MOSFET voltage rating, just like this one. That's why at times you you see all these uh, high capacity high capacity inverter like 96 volts 120 volts inverter they also have many MOSFET because of they they have achieved their aim by using a higher voltage rating but their current mode will be low so in order to meet the current that will flow through the transformer they need to parallel so that the MOSFET can can be able to handle the current that will flow through here i hope you guys are getting what i'm saying so Whenever you are designing, whenever you are selecting a MOSFET for your design, this is what you should also consider. The voltage, the voltage rate, uh, rating of the MOSFET, the amps rating. So it will also determine, since this one is a 12 volt system, so this one is a good choice. This one is a good choice. Because this is a 30 volt and we are applying 12 volts, so this one is safer. But the, where we have the problem is the amps, so we need to parallel it to, in order to achieve, so that in order for the MOSFET to handle this current that will flow here. So, let's, let's, uh, another thing before I go into the calculation on, on the load, uh, the load calculation, let's talk about the, the MOSFET gate. Uh, let's talk about the, the gate resistor. At times you will see some of these MOSFETs with a, with a resistor. The reason for those uh, resistor, because if you look at a MOSFET, a MOSFET acts like a capacitor. Once you apply a charge, once you apply a voltage through this gate, it will store a charge. And this charge, you can see the symbol here. This is a symbol of a capacitor. It will store this charge and this charge will hold on to this. It will cause the current to flow from drain to source. Even though if you remove the input voltage from the gate the current flowing through the drain to source will also continue in order to stop it you need to put the gate down so that it will discharge the stored charge in this in this mosfet so the reason why we are putting this resistor is in order to slow the charging process of this gate uh, mosfet because if you put a signal direct it will just store the charge immediately and it might also cause this thing the, because we are parallel so many MOSFET without the resistor this one might get a higher this one might come faster than this one which will also cause a problem that might damage some of the MOSFET so that's why we use a resistor in order to ensure that all of them have an equal signal so once you apply a signal the voltage the, or the charge that is going through this gate will also correspond with the one that is going through here. That's why we are using a, a gate resistor in order to control the charge that is and that is entering into the gate. And at times, and uh, not at times, all the whole inverter you will see a pull down resistor. The reason for this pull down resistor is to make sure that the, this gate MOSFET turns off. So that once the other one is switching, when you you will see this thing come to place when we are, we will start designing our first topology, which is push pull, because in the other topology we have the this we we have the second uh, uh, switching of this. What what that mean that this one we also have the second one that will be here because it has to alternate, and this is just a single switching system that I just do here. So we have to we are going to have it the second one that will be here and you will not want these two sides to switch at the same time if not it will cause a havoc and damage the system so that once this one switch this one will be off 
And once this one is on, this one will be off. We are going to discuss that in our next lecture about once we start teaching about push pull topology. So I'm just trying to explain how to choose a MOSFET and the working principle of the gates resistor and the pull down resistor. The pull down resistor is to ensure that these gates of this MOSFET is being turned off when the signal is changed. Like you can see, this is a square wave signal being fed into this the gate of this MOSFET. So the help of this this pull down resistor is to make sure that all this gate resistor is being turned off in order to avoid damage. So, so guys, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, share the video if this video is so helpful, and to next and also make sure you like this video. So, see you in our next in our next lecture when we'll be going into the push pull topology and you will see the, the how we we achieve our first inverter design but after explaining the push pull topology i will also talk about the pwm and spwm and what they do in an inverter so see you guys in our next video thanks and make sure you subscribe